Okay, my brother, could you please tell us uh, who you are? Uh, I'm Zakaria. Uh, I'm Zakaria from a little town in uh, near Zool in the Netherlands. I'm 25 years old and I'm from Lila. I'm Muslim now for almost two years. Could you tell me uh, when was your first uh, experience or your first meeting, how you would call it, with Islam? It um, was about after the elections in 2010 when the Heer Wilders, his, uh, his uh, freedom party became really big. A lot of people voted for him and I was like, how can it be that people are choosing to vote for a man who's against Islam, who's against the religion we all acknowledge? And I decided to buy a Quran and I was really interested in, I don't know, like what I thought was, you know, it's an old book, 1400, year, 1400 years old, the Quran. But I was interested in how people still, you know, so devoutly follow the, the Quran and, you know, the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So I started reading Surah Al Fatiha, and I was like, right, this is, I, I expected it to be old and I wouldn't feel attached to it. But it was, you know, fresh, it was new, something new, like I, really, like, I really opened something. And I started reading more and more and more, and I came to the, uh, I discovered the stories of uh, Musa, uh, Jesus, Abraham, and I was like, this is not what I expected, I, expe I expected something really totally different, you know, the religion of Muhammad uh, turned, out, turned out to be also the, the religion of Abraham, of Moses, of Noah, alayhi salam all those prophets. Did you have any religious background before? Um, well, my parents are Catholic. Um, I've had the three sacraments, and only, but we didn't go to church, only with, with Christmas or Easter, and when, you know, a funeral or a wedding, that, that's the only thing we ever really did about, about religion, about, about being a Christian. Was there a specific point which you could point out with your finger where you would say, this is what brought me to the definite decision of becoming a Muslim? Um, the pleasure of Iman, something I've never... It's, Iman is not just believe in the heart, it's, you know, the whole body is like some superhuman thing. I don't know. So, um, the, the crown weakens, not weakens the heart, it strengthens the heart, but it makes it soft. It just, I don't know, it just felt really attracted to... Um, and you experienced this through reading the Quran for the reading first time? Reading the Quran, um, reading um, or hearing Quran recitation, especially Surah Yasin. Um, that was the first time I really, out of pure love, I really cried. For the first time in my life, you know, I, I've experienced... You know, deaths of young children, but didn't move me at all. But that verse, Ayah 6, still remember it? It just sh it shook me, it just shook me, my whole body. Just that intense, just beautiful. Okay, so you decided to do the Shahada at that time? Yes, it was, um, I didn't even know how to pronounce it. I, it was alone in my, in my room, because I, I didn't know any Muslims. I never got any Dawah or anything. I was, um, was alone in my room, I was looking for, you know, how can I become a Muslim? I found some websites and I, uh, I still knew some, some speakers, you know, Ahmed Salam from Tilburg, for example. Uh, he was famous for not wanting to, wanting to shake the hand of Anita Verdonk. And uh, Abdul Jabbar van der Ven, I still knew, um, you know, because of the thing after the death of Theo van Gogh. And I found websites where, um, Brother was active on Dak Islam, don't know. And I found there what was the Shahada, what, um, how to pronounce it was even more important for me. And Alhamdulillah, I just I decided to take the Shahada and it was the best thing I ever did. Alhamdulillah. How did your family react to that? Did you tell them or how, how did that um, Yes, I told them, um, but I, only after I joined the Jama'ah and uh, I went to the Masjid as well, as Sunnah. And then I, at that moment I felt strong enough to tell them because um, my town is, not only the town, the whole, the whole area around there is um, very few Muslims, even few were practicing Muslims. So I decided to first be in a Jama'a and, you know, to have some, you know, when things get bad. I, but 
They thought it would be really lonely in an area filled with non-Muslims. And they were scared, of course, not of course, but scared of, um, you know, radicalization. And, you know, you know they, they heard the stories about Osama. And, you know, they only, the only thing they have to verify it is the news coming from, you know, from the Dutch tele television. And they, you know, they just think it's an old book. Why, why does a, 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 um, a boy from, from this small town, how can he choose for Islam? How can he choose the way of Muhammad? You know, it's so weird for them. And your friends and environment, school maybe, how did those people react to your um, conversion? Well, very, very down to earth, actually. It's not just that they, um, they didn't accept, really accept it. I, most of my friends I don't even speak with anymore. But they, um, they never had any harsh feelings or anything against it. They were really, um, what do I say this? They didn't talk bad about Islam or anything. They, they, they respected it. They, um, wasn't, they didn't make them curious or anything, but they did. It could have been worse, I guess, and when I hear stories about, you know, people telling I don't want to see you ever again, or any, you know, being um, exiled from the family, even. Alhamdulillah, it didn't happen to me. Um, since you took your shahada and become Muslim until now, how would you uh, subscribe uh, your life now? Better, uh, way better. Alhamdulillah, it's just, it's a blessing. It's, um, you know, it's, uh, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, Islam is not a religion of being, but it's a religion of becoming. I agree totally, it's just, because you're, ne you're never finished. And that's something, you always have something to strive for. And that's so beautiful about Islam, you know, you're always in a religious sense, but also in a worldly sense. You can always um, be better to your, to your neighbor, you can always be, um, you know, you can always add something, you can always learn a, an extra ayah or an extra surah, you can always learn something more about the Quran, you can always practice something more that's never done, it's never, and that's something, you know, because you have a goal, that's a Jannah, inshallah, and that's a goal you do not want to let go. For, uh, in, in practical way, of course, the, the end goal is Jannah, and we uh, hope to see you there, inshallah, inshallah. but uh, for the coming years, what are your dreams, your goals, your path you want to? <clears throat> I think the, the, um, to be more open, to be um, I, what I see is that Muslims are hiding, hiding inside their houses or in their masajid, and the, they always think that people are so easily, it's so easy for non-Muslims to step to take the first step into the masjid. It's not for them. They think it's, you know, they see it like it's a big wall in front of them. It's only a door to open. Um, to be more open towards non-Muslims. Um, Invite them to Islam, be you know friendly and in, in a good manner. Because when you um, when you only your people are really hiding. Be open, be transparent, um, and I think inshallah that will clear the road for so many people inshallah to either embrace Islam or uh, have a more positive view about Islam. Uh, to conclude, is there an advice you would like to give maybe to? Uh, Muslims and Muslims, you know, who are watching. Um, well, non-Muslims, I would always say, just do not hear, do not believe what the non-Muslims are telling about the Muslims. Because how can a non-Muslim tell you about the Deen? How can a non-Muslim tell you about what is Islam? How can a non-Muslim tell you about what is uh, what is a Muslim? What makes a Muslim? And Muslims, be more transparent. Be, um, you know. They could, you know, they complain a lot about, you know, it's so hard in the West. But when everyone grows a beard, it's not weird that you grow a beard. When everyone prays at work, it's not weird that you pray at work. When everyone, when every sister wears a, her hijab or a khimar, it's not weird that a, a woman wears khimar. So when we all do that, and we can support each other in that, be supportive of each other. And so, inshallah, we'll make it. We'll make something okay, I want to thank you very much and I uh, hope to see you in the future, inshallah. And uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.